Part three of the Reform Era. Uh, we're going to pick up with Nat Turner's Rebellion. He's uh, This is a massive slave rebellion. In 1831, it kills over 70 white people uh, on four plantations. They invaded four plantations. And this is going to scare southern slave owners even more than the abolitionists did. Because what it does is it says, if we free uh, slaves, they will kill us. So this is a fear you can trace it back to all slave uh, holding civilizations. This is a fear that is going to permeate the South, and it's going to be used in the American Civil War. Uh, that if, if they're free, they're going to kill us, and they're going to uh, uh, do all these bad things. So as you see, I have a video here for you if you want to watch Nat Turner's Rebellion in three minutes, or you can watch Hughes' History. It's 11 minutes. Both of them are, are good videos. So... The impact of Turner's Rebellion in Virginia at this time, they were debating whether or not to abolish slavery. And so in January of 1832, of course, they vote not to. But Western, legislat uh, Western leg legislators wanted to abolish slavery. They're mainly non-slave owners. They argued slavery injured the state's economy. It endangered whites. Guys, uh, they're arguing from an economic standpoint, job standpoint, wage labor versus slave labor. This movement was led by Thomas Jefferson Randolph, uh, the grandson of Thomas Jefferson himself. Eastern legislators, primarily slave owners, argued uh, against this and they're going to win. However, before Nat Turner's Rebellion, uh, the Western legislators were within one vote of being able to make this a state law to end slavery. And you got to think. It's one of the what ifs of history. If Virginia ended slavery, would the rest of the South follow? Because they are the most uh, uh, populous and politically strongest states in the South. So as you see, it doesn't happen. And Virginia, the, the Virginia militia troops murdered more than 200 slaves. Uh, it's called Virginia's Reign of Terror. A lot of these slaves didn't have anything to do with this rebellion. Um, southern plantation owners now live in fear. If we free them, they'll kill us. Uh, and then you start to see slave codes come about uh, a little more, um, a little more strict, a little more stern. There are stern laws designed to control African populations. It outlines the uh, statutes of slaves and the rights of masters, and it gave slave owners complete control over their slaves now. So, out of fear of the future uh, out of out of fear for future slave revolt slave owners pushed for a tight african law uh, known as slave codes and it affects all african americans um, they lose their voting rights free and slave they lose education rights they can't be taught how to read and write uh, they cannot purchase alcohol guns they cannot assemble in public they cannot preach the bible and they cannot own per, uh, private property remember these are, these affect mainly slaves, but it does in some states go to free Africans as well. I would like to point out that North Carolina in 1835 was the last southern state to deny blacks the right to vote, African Americans' right to vote. Uh, the gag rule was in, put in place by Congress in 1836, and basically it's put in place so we don't have to do, discuss slavery in the National Congress. Uh, it kept slavery subject from coming up in Congress so they could get work done. Um, this is going to be lifted nine years later in 1845. And man, when it is lifted, uh, it is not long before slavery becomes an issue in Congress. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So here are some pictures. Here are some um, newspaper depictions of the massacre in Virginia. And of course, that one. <laughs> 